that would be done by Rose and after that prayer. Hey Rose, ready? Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to read uh, from uh, James 1, uh, 2 through 18. And uh, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. Believers who are poor have something to boast about, for God has honored them, and those who are rich should boast that God has humbled them. They will fade away like a flower in the field. The hot sun rises and the grass withers. The little flower droops and falls and its beauty fades away. In the same way, the rich will fade away with all of their achievements. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterwards, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. And remember when you are being tempted, do not say God is tempting me. God is never tempting to do wrong. And he never tempts anyone else. Temptation comes from our own desires which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions. And when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. So don't be misled by my dear brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word. And we, out of all creation, became his prized possession. And I have read to you <coughs> 18. So God bless the hearers and the doers of his holy word. Amen. Let's bow our heads, please. Gracious Lord God, thank you for one more opportunity to join together, to break bread, Lord God, and to study your word. Lord, we ask that our hearts and minds be open and attuned in a special way, as always, Father God. But today, as we talk about sitting at the feast of wisdom, Lord God, we just ask that each heart and mind be blessed. That's in Those who weren't able to come, Lord God, bless them where they are. We pray for Jackie as she prepares to deliver this message. And we just ask that we receive everything that you would have us to receive. And we pray these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Good morning, ladies. Morning. Morning. Uh, Morning. We're going to jump right back in with our lesson today, continuing on the topic of wisdom. And last week we talked about the gifts of wisdom, and Solomon uh, is continuing with the story of the father teaching his son the uh, why he should choose godly wisdom. Uh, basically and essentially and ultimately it leads to a long and abundant life and so in today's story we find the father is starting to feel maybe like we do as humans anybody who's ever raised children or worked with young people sometimes you feel like you're just knocking your head against the wall you keep mm -hmm. repeating yourself and trying to instill in them uh, a certain value or uh, important thing you need them to know in order to grow. And so this son, has, this father has said pretty much all he can say to the son, but he's going to try one more time in today's lesson. And he's exhorting his son to seek that godly wisdom that truly does lead to a long and abundant life. And so in the story, the father paints a picture 
of two banquet feasts that are going to take place. And um, Solomon refers to wisdom as a lady in the feminine form. And so we're going to talk about lady wisdom, and then we're going to talk about her counterpart or uh, 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 or woman folly in the second half of the lesson, we'll say it that way. So we're going to start off, and uh, I'm going to start off with the first six verses of chapter nine, and then we'll discuss it. And so it goes like this, nine one, I'm in Proverbs chapter nine, starting with the first verse. Wisdom has built her house. She has honed her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her meat. She has mixed her wine and also furnished her table. She has sent out her maidens. She cries out from highest places of the city. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. For him who lacks understanding, she says, come, eat my bread and drink the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness and live and go in the way of understanding. Now, those are the first six verses. So we're going to stop there and we're going to discuss what Lady Wisdom has done thus far. Now, I said she is, um, uh, uh, we're considering her to be a lady. Why this is chosen? I don't know. Does anybody have any answer on that or any thoughts on that? Why Solomon referred to her as uh, a wisdom as feminine? Any thoughts on that? Just wondering, I don't, I don't know either. Hey, anyway. Jackie, I, you know what? I, that was that was a question I tried to uh, uh, reach Reverend on, but he was busy. And but and so I so I, I always say when I can't reach someone to get the information I want, that's God telling me to look it up. So okay. I I looked it up and I read and I read and I read and in the commentaries I read it says there is no. Uh, reason, rhyme, or reason why he chose wisdom in, in the persona of being female. So there okay. isn't anything that tells us why he did this. And okay. uh, I read a lot of different All commentaries. Right. And okay. uh, I, because that was my number one question. Why is wisdom, you know what, you always like wisdom to be referred to as a woman because you're a woman. But yeah. if you're a man, you're thinking, okay. So I wanted to really know if there was some ba biblical basis behind that. And I all that I read said that there is no biblical basis behind that. Uh, okay. It was just something that Solomon did. Okay. All right. Okay. I wondered too. I wondered too. And I wondered if I just wasn't digging deep enough. So, I uh, yeah. a lot. Curious about that. So anyway, we're going to go back to verse, starting with verse number one. And we see here where Lady Wisdom has sent out her invitations to come to my banquet. I'm having a banquet here at my house. So I want you to picture, if you will, Lady Wisdom's mansion. Picture it as a mansion sitting on a hill where it's visible to everybody who passes by it. And when you see this mansion, you see seven stone pillars positioned to support the structure's weight. Can you see that? In your mind and then each weight bearing pillar has its own attribute purpose to undergird wisdom's integrity as well as her value and you may recall from last week's lesson which was uh, Proverbs 8 12 through 14 seven attributes were listed that belong to wisdom godly wisdom they were prudence knowledge and discretion fear of the Lord his counsel and sound judgment, and finally, God's understanding and power. Those were the seven attributes we learned about in last week's lesson. So these things are eternal. So we can rest on the assurance as Christians, we can rest on the assurance that wisdom has fashioned her pillars, right? Using non-disintegrating stone which makes godly wisdom worthy to bear the weight of any trial, trouble, or tribulation you and I may face as we tra tra uh, travel through on our Christian journey. Any questions or comments about that? So wise Christians, I'm, 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 I'm personalizing this to us now, wise wisdom, builds a house or a temple and your body is the holy temple of God. So let's not overlook that. Christians build their temple 
on the solid rock foundation of Jesus Christ. It's never gonna disintegrate. And as more stones are strategically and purposefully added to this rock of salvation, the more clearly we understand the value of grabbing hold, not just hearing about it and receiving it, but with a passion, grabbing hold and putting godly wisdom into practice. So here's a point for us to think about. On what pillar are you leaning for support in the hard circumstances of your life? A lot of times when we face hard times in our life, we run to where? Where do we run? Let's talk about that. Where, where do we run, ladies? Some of us go to the altar. Okay. All right. Anybody else? I read my prayer closet. I can okay. read and explore the yeah. book of what I'm going to at that time and look up that scripture. Very good. Anyone else? I heard prayer closet. That's that's fine. And those are all uh, good places to go. And a lot of times uh, we find sometimes too that we will go to a friend or a person or we just struggle on our own to try to figure things out. And uh, God wants us to come to him. He says, I'm here. I'm available. Come in. Come in. I welcome you to come in anytime, day or night. So let us always remember that uh, God wants us in his presence and he's willing to listen to whatever it is we're going through. We're gonna talk about uh, verse number two of chapter nine, where it says, she has slaughtered her meat, she has mixed her wine, and she's also furnished her table. Now in verse one, we described her house, right? And we talked about her sending out all the invitations. And so now she's gone back into her house and she has laid out everything. She's cooked her food and she's mixed her wine. So as we move inside her house, we move toward the banquet hall. You can smell the fresh meat cooking and you look around the room and you can see a bar stocked with much wine. And she has unashamedly watered down the wine. Now, the Bible doesn't say explicitly why she did this, but there's several reasons that we can uh, come up with. Number one, she loves them enough not to get them drunk, okay? She needs them sober-minded. So she can instill in them the true value of what godly wisdom is. Another reason could be, because back in those days, they weren't as advanced technolo technologically, I can't say that word, you know what I'm saying, uh, <laughs> as we are today. So therefore, they may have used spices just to give it a little bit more flavor, okay? Uh, they do that today with wines. You can buy sweet wines, and it's not because the grapes are always just naturally sweet, because they add things to it to give it a little bit more um, uh, flavor. But it's, uh, we need to understand she didn't do it just because she's cheap. She was thinking well of her guests. And then we move on to number three. It says she has sent out her maidens. She cries out from the highest places in the city. In previous lessons, we saw wisdom herself going out and calling people. And now what does this say? It says she sends out her maidens. What do you think that means? What does that mean to you ladies? Who do you think her maidens are? Okay, she's referring to servants, servants who carried wisdom's message to the people. For uh, uh, years and years ago, I move away from the Bible a little bit, but years and years ago, before we had newspapers and Facebook and all this stuff, there were men known as town criers. You've heard of them. Their job was to go out into the town, ring bells to get the attention of the town folk so he could make a public announcement. For example, in a scene from Charles Dickens' The Christmas Carol, a town crier rings a bell as he walks through the town proclaiming it's 10 o'clock and all is well. Mm -hmm. 
as he moves on. So in the story in the Bible today, it says the message was delivered by maidens. So maidens represent their master. We as Christians today are servants to Jesus Christ. We represent Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. We are those maidens. We are those disciples who are to go out and proclaim godly wisdom to people who may not know Jesus Christ. Any comments? So we can say that Christians use godly wisdom to carry out the good news of uh, who Jesus Christ is to those who may not know them. Anybody want to uh, know him, not them, but know him? Anybody want to add or take away from that? We're looking at verse number four. It says, whoever is simple, let him turn in here. That's what the maidens are saying. Lady Wisdom lives here. If you're simple, come on in here. If you lack understanding, come on in here. And then it goes on into verse five. It says, come eat bread and drink the wine I have mixed. So who are the simple? I, I, I had to dig a little deeper about that too. Uh, I, and I, I think it, could, it, it too can carry various uh, definitions. The simple-minded, maybe we think mm. of somebody who don't get it. And I'm thinking it could be naive, it could be inexperienced, it could be people maybe who are easily swayed. Um, mm. It could be people who want to know who Jesus is. I think it could be those things. Anybody want to share with me on that? Jackie, yes. this is Katie. I, yes. I was thinking that the simple are, are all the people that you are, are thinking about. But when I read that, you know what? When I thought about me not having, not knowing what I know now, and I'm not near, I'm not as far as I need to be, I, I just didn't consider myself as a simple person. I think I, I, I read that word and I thought, was that that, that it, it's a, it was offensive to me simple it was like you were ignorant but we are ignorant and in the dark and walking around in the dark when we do not have the knowledge in 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 knowing who we serve um and and how to praise who we serve and also to think that we are providing for ourselves and God is not in the mix of providing for us. So we are simple-minded in that sense. And, uh, but when I read that, I thought, I have been simple. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We are. And, and I, I'm, I'm, that's it. Anyone that lacks wisdom of, <clears throat> to me, of where your uh, provisions come from, where your, your life stems from is simple. So it's, 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 that's what it meant to me in, in connection with it, but it just still ties to what you just said, but I was a tad bit offended when I recognized myself as simple. <laughs> wow, well, thank you. Thank you for that, Katie. Anybody yeah. else? Well, Jackie, um, I was, <laughs> when I was thinking of simple, I was just thinking of, of a, just a simple person, you know, but um, a person that needs directions, then uh, a person that don't know right from wrong, you know, and mm -hmm. there have been a time that I've been in that position. So I was mm -hmm. a simple person. And mm -hmm. just like Katie, you know, if you don't know that that is ignorant, but a lot of times mm -hmm. we don't like to use that word. And I remember um, Sister Clanton, uh, Judy, she used to use it a lot. And, and I'm thinking what well, she, but that, that is the correct word to use if you don't know, but then you can use, you know, if you don't know other than ignorant. Right, thank you. Anybody else wanna comment on that? Those are some very good thoughts, lady. And you know, um, right behind that, whoever is simple come in here, she says, anybody who lacks understanding. So it, it goes right back to what Marie mm -hmm. and Katie were saying. You thought mm -hmm. you knew, but you really didn't. And we really right. still don't know why, because we're growing. It's not because we're stupid, but we are still growing spiritually. And so we must remember that we can have knowledge, 
without understanding. That makes us simple. That well, when, makes us simple. Go ahead. When you when you said that, I knew I I was referring to myself because I'm like now I know it's a lot of things that I don't know and I I don't you know feel like I'm really ignorant but I mean so, you know like I'm just so new and learning and uh, I'm like way down at, kind of at the bottom but I'm still so willing to learn and I'm doing everything that I can to try to um, to uh, educate myself more you know by uh, tuning in to these type of, uh, of services and um, you know like just just when I hear the preacher preaches and everything try to take in as much information as I can um, and stuff. So I kind of like thought of myself, you know, when uh, when you said that, so. Well, you know, um, thank you, Lisa. That's being pretty transparent. Uh -huh. And I appreciate that about you. Uh, the, the thing, uh, but, but um, you say you feel like you're way down on the bottom when it comes to learning. Truth is we all are. Well, I know we're at different levels, but we all are in God's eye down at the bottom. But, but the truth of it is this. It's a, it should be a very exciting time for you. That's oh, how I yeah. want you to, yeah, that's how yeah. I want you to look it at is. it. Yeah, it is. Because you're hungry. So just think of, of how much good food you're going to take in with this feast that God is continually feeding you and what wisdom has already shown you this is what i have in store for you lisa keep coming back and i'll give you exactly. a little bit more and a little bit more so i want to thank you for that and oh, just yeah. to just to piggyback on what she was saying can you guys hear me yes, yes. okay good morning um uh, you know sometimes when i read the scripture it seems like I learned something new each time I read it over and over again. There you go. And that that kind of remind me of that God teaching me, you know. So when she mentioned about being at the bottom, sometimes I feel like that when I'm in the actual class at church when you was teaching before. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I try to join in. So, you know, if maybe what I'm feeling or what I'm experiencing uh, if I'm learning from that or, you know, if I'm uh, picking up on, on things that God wants me to know and learn to get the knowledge. Yeah. Exactly, yes. So oh, this, yeah. this Zoom class really does help. I agree with you on that, Lisa. I, yeah. I'm trying to stay connected as well. Well. Yes, thank I, you. <laughs> that's the purpose. That's the purpose of Sunday school. That's yes. the purpose of God calling us together. Uh, so we are to learn of him and then learn with and from each other. So we can now take what we have learned, that's the knowledge, and put it into practice. That's the understanding. We cannot do it alone. We, we, right. we, we must do it together as one family. If you really want to grow spiritually, you can't think of yourself as, well, I'm way up above her and this, or right. I don't know as much as her because I'm just going to be quiet. No, we need right. everybody. We need each other. That's what that, well, now in verse five, it says, come eat my bread and drink the wine I have mixed. And so I went back a little further. Um, we talked about her mixing the wine. And I, I went to Matthew uh, verse uh, chapter 26, verses 26 and 27, because I wanted to find an example of when the disciples had knowledge of who Jesus was, but they lacked understanding of who he really was. Really was. They knew, they, yeah, they knew Jesus, that man. But they really didn't have an understanding of Jesus the Messiah, even though he talked to them and he gave them instruction. And as Lisa says, she tries to take in as much as she can. I'm sure the disciples listen, but they just really wasn't getting it all. Matthew 26, uh, 26 and 27 reads like this. It says, and when he had given thanks, we're talking about Jesus, he mm -hmm. broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples. This is the last supper we're talking about. And he okay. said this, take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, 
all of you, this is my blood poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. So you see right here, uh, Jesus at the Last Supper invited his disciples to come eat his feast, his eternal feast that would be with them forever as it is with us and for us today. So here's the thing, as Christians, we can find ourselves being just like those disciples. We can be lacking in spiritual understanding, but we don't have to be fearful. We don't have to be ashamed. We can take heart because guess what? We're already victorious in Jesus Christ. If we've accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we're already victorious. We just have to start using the tools he has equipped us with. We've got salvation. We've got salvation. And so we are a work in progress. Salvation will be with you until God takes you home as far as progressing, as far as growing. That's what it says when we say work out your own soul salvation. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. So the more we work out our soul salvation, the wiser in Christ we become. Any comments? Verse six says, forsake foolishness and live and go in the way of understanding. Hmm. Forsake foolishness and live and go in the way of understanding. What do you think about that? Any comments? Well, how about this? God doesn't want us to sacrifice our life to the ways of the world. Once you have confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you need to learn to be obedient to his will and his way. So for believers, we really don't have a choice. When we step out of the world, we should step out of the world for good. Now, yeah, we slip. That's human nature. But you don't dwell there. You don't wallow in it. Yeah, uh, Jackie, this is Joan. Go ahead. Um, um, as soon as you read that scripture, I immediately thought um, that the meaning behind that was whatever we know is wrong to do, just don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes yeah. it's as simple as that. Yeah. Yes. Very good. Very good. Thank you, Joan. Thank you for that. So yeah, God doesn't want us to, He doesn't want us to do that. He said, you know, if you know it's wrong, it's wrong. And don't say the devil made me do it. Stop giving Satan credit in your life. That's what you're doing. When you say the devil made me do it, why are you bringing him in? Mm -mm. Don't do that. Don't do that. Truth be. You might conjure up one of his bad spirits. Don't do it. Don't play with that kind of stuff. I, I'm kind of scary that way. So yeah, don't say that. Don't say that. So yes, it tells us here. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Jackie, this is simply telling us to turn a deaf ear to strange doctrine, strange teaching, and false prophets. Right. Right. And strictly go the way of the word, the Bible. Because right. we know that this is true understanding. We're not supposed to, it's telling us not to listen to in, just to any and everything. Mm -hmm. it doesn't line up with the Bible. Don't go with it. Right. By saying, and live and go the way of understanding. Understanding comes from knowledge of the word of God. And that's what he's telling us. And if you don't mind, I'd like to back up to five just quickly. When he talks about bread and wine, we know bread represents the broken body of God. And wine represents the blood of Jesus. And so he's telling us, come and eat. Take in my word. So that kind of goes along with verse six. Eat of my bread and drink of my wine, which I have mingled. He died for us and he shed his blood for us. And in verse six, just picks up from there. Because of what he did on the cross, we are to live by his word, which is the true understanding. 
And if we can grasp that, that's where our knowledge and understanding comes from and will keep us from being what we were talking about earlier, simple. There's nothing wrong with being simple. We all, but we don't have to stay simple. We qualify ourselves to be put in the wise category because we seek knowledge and to know more. And that's all we have. There's nothing wrong with the term simple. That shouldn't be offensive. You know, we, until you come into knowledge and understanding and have the wisdom of God, you are without knowledge. So don't take that term so lightly. Even if it's nothing wrong with considering yourself simple. We all start out simple until we come in the knowledge and we come to know, so. Yeah, thank you so much for that, Sister Mildred. And again, and thank you for re-emphasizing uh, in five, the, the, uh, the blood and the flesh of Jesus Christ that uh, uh, is the eternal way to go if we wanna have wisdom in our life. And when we talk about uh, gaining understanding again we're talking about gaining spiritual understanding not just reading the scripture and say oh it means this it means that um a lot of times scriptures aren't black and white some of you may not want to hear that but it's not always black and white all i'm saying is you got to dig you have to dig it's not always clear, just like we started in the beginning, saying that, why did they say wisdom is feminine? The Bible doesn't really tell us. Now, does that mean we're to doubt the Bible? No, it does not. It just means we don't have the spiritual understanding or maturity to understand it because God has not allowed us to have that understanding for whatever his reason is, because his thoughts are not our thoughts, his ways are not our ways. So yeah, Mildred, thank you for sharing. There is nothing wrong with being simple, because guess what? If you think you're anything else, you're no good to Jesus Christ, because he can't teach you. He can't teach you. He can't teach you if you think you're all that. And a bag of chips, as Reverend Fields used to say all the time. So. We have to understand that Jesus is the source of wisdom. So if you want spiritual understanding, because you're trying to grow spiritually, you have to go to the source. You can't go anyplace else. So if we do this, we reap the blessings of peace, contentment, and joy. But we must be willing to repent. We talked about that in earlier lessons. Repentance isn't something you do one time. It's something we do continually. And we commit to follow Jesus Christ. It's a lifestyle change. And it calls us to take a different path. And it's filled with sacrifices that ultimately lead to that abundance of holy gifts. Any more comments or questions? So here's the key truth to wind up that first of uh, the first six uh, verses. The power of Jesus Christ's blood is everlasting and his wisdom gives understanding to the simple. So what do you think Solomon was implying in his description of how wisdom built her house? That goes all the way back to the beginning of the lesson. What do you think he was implying? Remember we described, I told you to picture the house and see the pillars in front of it. And, and uh, it's a grand old place, right? So uh, what do you think he was trying to say? The important thing, not just the looks of it, but what was the importance of those pillars and being seen on the hill? What do you think he was trying to say, Joan? I think it means that it's important how the foundation is built. It's important how we build our, our scripture and our um, Bible base, you know, that we have to put some thought and really make sure it's sound. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm 
Brown, it's Ryan, Doretta, and Rose's niece. Um, I think that the number seven is important because uh, it means like completion or perfection. And so I think it speaks to um, the fact that her house is, uh, it's durable, it's able to handle um, all that may come to it or those who like would seek her, you know, for knowledge and understanding and guidance. Very important, very important. Thank you, thank you for that. Anybody else? Yes, I think Kathy. that, I, um, go ahead. Um, I've written down knowledge, understanding, obedient, discretions, instruction based on God's word. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. I, yeah, that's, yeah. That's exactly, that's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Those are those pillars. Those are those pillars. Those are the pillars that you and I should be building our uh, wisdom onto, our faith. Yeah, that's a, yes. Go ahead, Pat. I was just going to say those seven pillars is what um, I think the statues that we are supposed to be standing on when we're, you know, trying to get the wisdom of God or as, you know, he's given it to us, that these are, you know, some of the ways and habits we're supposed to pick up instead of like being foolish of the, you know, people of the world. Yes. Very and good. Thing. Jackie, I was wanted to add that seven is, is a number of completion. So it would symbolize complete wisdom, complete knowledge, uh, fulfillment, and the fact that it says high, it's how it's to be discarded. Mm -hmm. Very good. And is it somewhere, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Is it, some, is it somewhere where those seven statues are listed? Yes, you can go back to last week's lesson in Proverbs 8, verses 12 through 14. Okay. Last Thank week's you. lesson, Proverbs 8, verses 12 through 14. You should be able okay. to pick those up, hon. Okay, we're going we're gonna to move right on into that second division now. And we're looking at uh, verses 8 through 10 of Proverbs 9, and it reads like this. Do not correct a scoffer lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man and he will love you. Give instruction to a wise man and he will, give instruction to a wise man and he will be still wiser. Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Okay, this is verses eight, eight, nine, and 10. So we're talking about the fear of the Lord being the beginning of wisdom. And um, I made a note by verse, I put a star by verse 10. Uh, so I wanted to bring out something and now I can't find where the, my, what my star is referring to. So I probably shouldn't have said nothing. So anyway, <laughs> oh, I get confused sometimes, but let's, let's, I do too much writing and scribbling. Okay, let's go to, um, let's go, go on here with verses eight, nine, and 10. Now, I want to say something right off from the beginning and, and without no intention to offend, because when a lot of times when Christians study the word, we detach ourselves from correction, so to speak. We always think we're talking about non-believers only. You know what I'm saying? When it, when it gets hard, when you start studying some of these scriptures and you don't want to be convicted, you, you know, we have a tendency to detach ourselves and say, well, that's for non-believers. So what I'm going to tell you right off the beginning that non-believers as well as complacent Christians, those who are comfortable with their spiritual status, will sometimes test. Sometimes we test the word. We may not do it consciously. And sometimes we may even despise God's message. If it hits us a little bit, you know, somebody, look, years ago, I'll never forget, I was a little girl, walked into the, uh, anyway, I walked past my mother and accidentally stepped on her foot and she had a corn and she about knocked me across the, the room. 
And I've <laughs> never forgotten that. You see, I've never forgotten that. Cause she did hit me and it didn't, I went sailing, but it hurt her toe. So I'm just saying that um, we as Christians sometimes consciously despise God's message and other times we don't. My mother couldn't stand the thought that I stepped on her toe. So, you know, I, I had to pay for that dearly. <laughs> we pay in our Christian walk dearly by suffering sometimes because of our own will to not follow God's word. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Jackie, okay. it makes a lot of sense because I think that if we as Christians want to always see how little someone else has grown and never look at how little we are growing mm -hmm. by judging that other person, then we lack wisdom. Well, right. let me put it this way. We lack God's wisdom uh, because it's so easy for us to become, for lack of a better word, holier than thou and yes. think that we know everything and that we can't be taught by anyone, uh, especially right. if that person doesn't comply with my way of thinking right that i can't learn anything from that person so we have to be careful and mm -hmm. and you know you have to have a fear and reverence for god to not want to cross that line amen and allow the holy spirit to give you the insight to recognize when you do cross that line mm -hmm. because it's 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 that's a scary line to cross and 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 i i i i see and I, and I pray for, I have to work on Katie. I pray for Katie, Lord, help me that I don't cross that line. Help me that mm -hmm. I don't judge this person beyond yes. you know, what, whatever. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're, we're you, know, it's, 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 you know, this is why I said, don't argue. And, and I like what my commentary said. It says, you know what, these people that won't listen, don't argue with them uh, mm -hmm. because you can't, change the mindset of someone that thinks they're right nope. and and are, are, are have drawn that line that i can't be taught by you or anyone else and i'm going to pick and choose who i'm being taught by regardless of whether what they're teaching me is right or wrong because i'm i'm looking at other things other than god in that person mm -hmm. so it's just i mean it's just so important and i love solomon bringing this out you know what what, what did Jesus say when he says to his, his disciples out? He says, if they don't receive you, you know what? Knock the dust off your feet. Go on to yep. the next city. person that's waiting and willing to receive what mm -hmm. I have to offer, which is eternal mm -hmm. life. And I think mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's wisdom that kicks in when you recognize that you are dying, that I'm in a dark place, and that I need, uh, I don't know it. And, and, and I'm never going to know it. So long as we're here on this earth, to me, this is how I use myself, there is still yet something for each one of us to learn. Right. Because God's just not leaving us here to just sit here and be, look, knots on a log. We are here to learn and to help someone else. There you go. It, it's all about someone else. Jesus there came you. to help someone yeah. else other than himself. We are here to help and be the example of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I'm done. I'm getting excited. So oh, that's okay. Stop. You, make, you get me oh. excited, Katie. Right. Yeah. It, is, it is about. It's not about self. It's about others. Yes. Yeah. And I just want to share that you know, uh, and all back way to Lisa and everybody listening. Um, I don't put myself on a low totem pole. What I do is surround myself around the senior women so I can Amen. learn yes. from them. Because yes. I'm going to let you know, <laughs> when I was out in the world and got burned, I'll never forget it and came back to church. Those senior women came to me. They didn't say, what, about time you came back or whatever. They said, we've been praying for you. Mm -hmm. So when you put yourself around all other people, it just makes you, the senior, what I'm trying to get from my senior women is wisdom, knowledge, so I can instill into my friends or whoever I'm around that's still out mm -hmm. in the world, when they come to me, then I can share what I have that's learned. Right. Uh, that's see, right. when I was in that fire and when I came back, 
God was trying to bring me back home and to come back home was I went through a third, a full figure, a third degree fire and it brought me back. So uh, Lisa as my high school friend, we both still on the bottom, as you say, but I ain't on no bottom because I surround myself around those full life. So I feel that Miss Jackie and Miss Marie and Katie and, and Sister Warren and all of y'all and Rose, even mm -hmm. though some of you ladies are just a few years older than me in the senior, I love being around you and I can't wait. I know I'm going to have to knuck and elbow buck you when I see you, but we don't double buck because I miss you. I've been working on the weekends trying to help someone else, but I just want to share that with you all. Senior women, I love you. And that's where I get that wisdom. So when we Amen. build ourselves around the positive people and the senior uh, women, because something, um, I think it was church anniversary that uh, Miss Aisha Price said, I said something to her 20 some years ago that made her feel better. But the senior said something to me 27 years ago that made me feel better when I came back to church. So. Mm -hmm. Lisa, we on the same level with them senior ladies we looking at right now. And if we just keep <laughs> on building ourselves around all of them. And oh. I love everybody. Mm -hmm. Jackie, yes. Jackie, Brenda yes. is taking Brenda is taking me back to Mother Malone and your parents and all the rest of those guys. Because that's who that's who I followed. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Well, uh, well mm -hmm. let me add that whoever y'all followed. Y'all had some great experiences with those people because we did. You, you ladies are really a great bunch of mm -hmm. godly women, and I'm just really happy to know you all, including Katie. And I don't consider Katie to be a senior senior woman, but you know her her um, uh, <laughs> just her 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 message uh, when she speak about God is just like so catchy like you better be listening to me because I'm about to tell you something you need to know that's no. the way that's what I hear in Katie that's what I hear whenever she speeds about God so listen I, God is said. allowing me to age real well <laughs> her passion Katie's that's passion for thing. God shows through her passion yeah, truly it. every week it shows through so i thank you ladies for that rich discussion and and i think so we can we can say this we can say this uh at least about our little group that's here today that we're wise because wise people humbly acknowledge their sinful condition we don't yeah. just say i'm a christian and i'm not sinful we recognize our sinful condition and we accept the rebuke of our foolish ways. Don't we do that? So we embrace yeah. the truth of wisdom and we're trying to stay on that narrow road and not that wide path that the world is on that they think is gonna get them to heaven, but it only leads to destruction. We're trying to stay on that narrow road. And right. so a, a wise person is grateful for instruction and welcomes the opportunity to become wiser. That's what you guys just said to me. That's what you just, mm, 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 mm. we're having a very, now, people who are really humble, people who are really humble and wise never reach the point of satisfaction. There's no room for us to be complacent Christians. We never reach a point of satisfaction. We never feel like we've grown enough. We never feel like we've mastered wisdom's truth. We just don't, mm -hmm. we just don't. We realize there's a need to continue growing in wisdom. Yes, yes. And that includes correction and instruction, which is not always gonna feel good, but we get it that he loves us. So a righteous person is teachable. Yes. A righteous person is teachable and desires to learn more about the way of righteousness. And that's what every one of you women are doing. And that's what you're helping me do. So I say thank you to each and every one of you. So where does all this lead us? It leads us right back to Proverbs chapter one, the fear of the Lord, 
is the beginning of knowledge. All of this takes us, we're in chapter nine, this takes a lesson that's taken us all, okay. So to fear the Lord is to trust and to know him. When we trust him, a door opens up. My we, Lord. Yeah, you go. Girl, when, you we, when, we trust, yeah, when we trust God, Ooh. a door opens up to understanding wisdom's truth. You don't get it until you have to trust God for something, for something. I don't care if it's a tomato plant growing out there. If the, <laughs> the trust is in God, he's going to open a door for you to understand why it is or it ain't growing. So here's the key truth. When we fear the Lord and we regularly repent before him, that means turn away from whatever sin we were involved with. We're putting our wisdom into practice. Repent doesn't just mean saying, I'm sorry. I hear some of these politicians on here now, like the, 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 the man who, who was talking about uh, making the mocking thing out of, I can't breathe. And then he, you know, and then he takes the mask off and says, ooh, like now I can breathe. I mean, he was mocking making right. light of the way that gentleman died, whether he knows right. it or not. And he, then he turns around, oh, I'm sorry. I, come on now, come on now, come on. Right, he right. Better. He knew what he was doing when he, yeah. did it. when he did it. So you can't say sorry and walk away if you're a believer in Christ. You have to repent. That man was not a repentant man. He might have been sorrowful because somebody called him out on it, but he's definitely not a repentant soul. We're going to move right on into Division Three. We're looking at the 13th through 18th. I got to rush on now. And starting okay. at verse 13, it says, A foolish woman is clamorous. She's simple. She knows nothing. She sits at a door of her house on a seat by the highest places of the city to call to those who pass by, who go straight on their way. Whoever is simple, turn in here. And he who lacks understanding, she says, stolen water is sweet and bread eaten in secret is pleasant, but he doesn't know that the dead are in her place, that her guests are in the depths of hell. Wow. So how does Solomon describe her? We're now talking about Lady Folly. In those first six verses, we were talking about lady wisdom, godly wisdom. Now we're talking about lady folly. We're fixing to go to her banquet, take a peek and see what's going on there. So how does Solomon describe lady folly or woman? We ain't even going to call her a lady. Woman folly. Right off the bat, she's an adulteress. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Says that she's clamorous that means she's loud and yeah. boisterous now she's simple and knows nothing now simple here might take on a totally different meaning than mm -hmm. the way we discussed it and perceived it early on would you agree with me on that or yes not? i mean she can be simple and satisfied mm -hmm. being simple mm -hmm. no yeah. desire to learn more we don't and, know. and then it say her water is stolen so she could possibly be a thief. Well, she is a thief mm -hmm. in that uh, as Marie, I think it was Marie who said she was an adulteress. Yeah, yeah. she's yes. a thief. She's, she's a, a thief. thief. Yeah, and she says, bread eaten in secret is pleasant. Well, you know, somebody didn't tell her that whatever you do in the dark comes out in the light. Right. That's where she lacks that godly wisdom. It's going to come right. to light. Whatever it is you're doing in the dark, it's only a secret until the sun comes up in the morning. Mm -hmm. So, it, foolish. What, what else does it say? Did he say about her? Do we say no? She's foolish. Foolish, exactly. And that's a word that scripture doesn't like us to use so much when we talk about each other, not to call someone a fool, but we see mm -hmm. here, it says she is foolish. And the last thing it said to us in verse 18 is, people don't know that you're entering a place of the dead. It's a dead end road. It's a dead end road. Mm -hmm. My husband and I were trying to find MJ's fish the other day, and we'd never been there before on Enos Avenue. And uh, somehow we, we was, man, we was out here by Bun Park, uh, not Bun Park, but Bergen Park. I don't know. We just got ourselves so turned around. 
And I call myself following the uh, directions that was on my telephone, but I don't know what I entered that got us all off course. But we ended up headed towards a dead end road. And I thought of this lesson that I had put together. And I thought, Bill and I are just as happy following these directions. And then we saw a sign that said dead end. Ooh. And we had to turn around and, and come back and try to find our way, which we eventually did. But it's the same way on our Christian walk. If you're not careful, you become too confident in your common sense. <laughs> you're going to mess up your godly wisdom in trying to seek godly wisdom. And before you know it, you've hit a dead end road. You got to turn around and start all over again. But that's the good thing about being a seeker of Christ. You can always ask true forgiveness if you have a sincere heart. And Jesus is going to give it to you. Jackie? So, go ahead. We can't separate, use the word foolish, and not talk about being a fool. Mm -hmm. because they go together a fool is someone who is conceited they're full of pride they're not able to make a good judgment they have no common sense or wisdom they're silly they're stupid they're ridiculous they're self-absorbed and they're worthless and our scripture is telling us we're not supposed to try to rebuke this kind of people Mm -hmm. because those are the ones that will turn back on us yes. my lord yes. but, if we, if, but if you rebuke a wise person mm -hmm. that is full of, of wisdom and they're able to make good sound judgments because they have knowledge and experience and understanding they are open to receive a wise person always seeks to become wiser and to right. gain even more knowledge and they will end up thanking us and appreciating and receive whatever we come to tell them. Whether they agree or not, they will sit and listen. That's a wise person. So that's the kind of people that we could, when we say we rebuke, it's not that we're chastising them, but we're trying to bring them into an area of knowledge and understanding out of our love for God and for their souls. And so that's why they sh they're willing to receive because their, our, their wisdom, well, our wisdom, all wisdom comes from God, let's face it. All wisdom comes from God. Well, he mm -hmm. is, he, thank you for that, Mildred. He, he is the source. He is the source. And I'm gonna disagree with you a little bit on the word rebuke. Uh, when you say you rebuke somebody, that's showing sharp disapproval. Sharp, sharp, sharp disapproval. And I think there is nothing wrong with that. Sometimes we have to uh, thicken up the skin a little bit. If it's being given to you out of love, then that sharp disapproval, you're not going to take it personally. You're going to take it as uh, opportunity to grow. Just like when we go through trials and tribulations and you know, sometimes you may hear somebody say, well, honey, I remember she did this and she did that. And now it's coming back to haunt her. Don't do that because you have no idea. And when we go through trials and tribulations of any kind, we mm -hmm. need to do what James says. Uh, he says, count it all joy. Don't think literally. There again, it ain't black and white. He's not talking about be joyful because you're going through a trial and a tribulation. What he right. wants you to be joyful in is knowing in the end, on the other end, you're going to be stronger because of it. Your faith is going to be stronger. Your endurance is going to be stronger. You're ready for the next test because you saw what God did here. And now you can rest assured that no matter what comes, he's there to carry you through it. So, I mean... So when we say rebuke, let's not coil, just like the word simple, simple, let's not coil. We can be sharply uh, corrected as a Christian because we're always trying to learn. So, so we, don't, we don't turn against it. And thank you so much for helping us understand that. I want to say too that uh, with this woman, Folly, uh, Mildred, I'm going to add on to that. Uh, people who are foolish, in the way they carry themselves, uh, they're gullible. A lot of times they're gullible. 
And a lot of times they're just ignorant of the truth and sermon, they can't discern because they just don't have it. So they're prone to fall. They're prone to the pitfalls of life. It says here that she knows nothing. She's ignorant. She doesn't have good sense. She doesn't have fear of the Lord. And he compares it again. Wisdom is compared to a woman. So here we can say that she might be pretty. The world might be pretty. But that's all the world has going for itself is prettiness. There's nothing eternal about it. There's nothing of lasting value. So unlike Lady Wisdom, who sends her messengers, this is where I'm moving on now, unlike Lady uh, Wisdom in the earlier scriptures, who says she sent out her messengers, this lady ain't got no messengers to send. She is sitting out there herself, and she is bidding people who are trying to live the Christian life to come into her place. She's not even trusting her messengers to go out there. She's doing it herself to send out this invitation for people to come into her house. And what we need to understand, as Sister Mildred was trying to tell us, is this lady has built her house on sinking sands. She might have pillars in front of her house, but hers might be made out of wood which rots. And I told you, Lady Wisdom built her pillars out of disintegrating stones. They ain't going nowhere, okay? And so you see, here's the difference here. The truth is, woman folly mimicked Lady Wisdom to a T. She prepared her house, built her house, she prepared it too. Just like Lady Wisdom, she watched her, did did her harm what she knew she was going to do, but she tries to entice people to come in with the pleasures of secret sin. So she offers her guests water instead of wine. That water is stolen. And uh, we said that was because she was an adulteress, so because she was the wife of another man. So here's the truth. The ways of the world are carnal, temporary and in opposition to the life-giving internal nourishment that God alone can give us. So any more comments or questions? Um, I wanted to speak to uh, the root of, of a woman folly. The fruit of her house is death. And so yes. I was thinking about how, you know, if we're entering a space, like a physical space, um, it's important that we look around and see the fruit of that space, right? So that we can assess where that person or where whatever it may be is coming from. Um, so that's something that was on my mind as you were teaching and I was reading through your work. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. Much appreciated. So ladies, what do you think? Um, when we're talking, actually, I'm pretty much done with the lesson now. Uh, Oh, you, we just have to keep walking on the path we're trying. As Lisa said, we keep coming back every Sunday. We're feeding each other. We're feasting off the word of God. We cannot help but grow. Uh, we cannot help but grow. Now, I might gain weight a little faster than you, okay? <laughs> or I might lose weight a little faster than you. But we're all working on it together. And that's what counts. And we're all going to get to where we're trying to get if we allow ourselves. So my, uh, I guess my word to you would be keep on seeking after wisdom. Don't be like our president of the United States who knows nothing. He's one of them simple people who don't know, don't care, ignorant, and I guess he's content staying that way, uh, staying that way. Um, to him, it's all about himself, self-indulgence and pleasures <laughs> and unbelievers like I call him an unbeliever and I know that's not fair for me to do that, but I just don't see how a person who seeks to follow after Jesus Christ can do the things that he does. I'm sorry about that. But anyway, I'm gonna close out by saying this. Solomon has made it clear to all who are willing to listen that there's only two ways to live, foolishly or wisely. As we go about living our daily lives, we must constantly choose which path we want to follow. That's every day. 
That's every day. You don't just get it one time. Every day we have to make a conscious decision which path we're going to follow. As Joan says, uh, you know, you, you just, if you recognize something is wrong, you just don't do it. But sometimes it's not easy to recognize it. So it's a constant, it's a constant uh, following after wisdom, seeking after wisdom. So um, we constantly have to choose. Sometimes it's made with a conscientious mind and other times not so much. So here's the key truth for us. Christians are physically present in this world but we're not part of its value system. I think that's very important. You know, the scripture says we're in the world, but not of the world. So I says we are present in this world, but we do not share the world's value system. You might say that's easy and you might say it's hard, but it's the truth. There was a commentary I read on today's lesson and it concluded these two houses banquets this way. It said two houses stand, but one will fall. Two meals are offered, but one is poisoned. Two hostesses extend invitations, but one is deceptive. It is up to each individual to decide which house to enter, which meal to eat, and which invitation to accept. Choose wisely. So that's the end of today's lesson. If there's no comments, I'm gonna pray this out really quick because we're past time. Okay. So Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today. I thank you for each lady present in the rich discussion we've shared about you and your word, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you for being patient enough to teach us, Father, and, and, yes. and scold us where we need to be scolded and, yes. and lift yes. us up and edify us where we need to need that too in our lives, dear Heavenly Father. Just thank you for being in our lives. Help <laughs> us to move with urgency in seeking yes. your wisdom, Father. You. And after we get it, Father, then to share with the others the truth of who Jesus Christ is, and we will be forever Ooh. grateful in your sake. Thank you, Lord. Name. Thank amen. you, Lord. Yes. In Jesus' okay, name. Ladies. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our request. Um, I just have a praise report. Go ahead. Um, the mass that I asked you guys to pray for me for it was uh, benign, so I do not have any cancer thank you jesus thank, Ooh, you, thank jesus. you lord amen it's thank true yes mm -hmm. thank you lord thank you lord okay. anyone else prayer requests praise requests or praise reports <laughs> i'm just asking for a special request for my nephew uh Aiden johnson okay I didn't catch the name, Kathy. Dayton, D-A-Y-T-O-N, Johnson. Okay, thank you. If nothing else, I'm gonna turn this over to Sister Warren. Okay, that's, thank you, Jackie, for a beautiful, beautiful lesson on feasting on wisdom. Wonderful. And uh, if you have any prayer requests that didn't come to your mind at the moment, please uh, email or text Rose Bowen. And that's it. And anyone who would like to stay, we'll go ahead and share.